everybody. Uh, we're here at the Stockbridge Cemetery Commission meeting on Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. And this is a rescheduled meeting from last week during the snowstorm that was supposed to be held on March 14th, 2023. And uh, I am sitting in for Karen Marshall today, who is homesick, unfortunately. And so why don't we start off with approval of the minutes for January 31st, 2023. Motion approved. <laughs> Second. Great. You don't have any edits, huh, Pat? <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Um, following. All those, All those in favor, aye. Oh, sorry. Aye. 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 No. Thank you. Aye. You're good. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wrote with one. It's like one. Mm -hmm. Um. So thank you also to CPC funding. The cemetery received forty-two thousand dollars for the sergeant. And that's the that's recommendation in town meeting. So recommendation to town meeting. Right. Okay, Fine. thank yeah. thank you. Yes. So um, I think that the the anti cemetery league may come out in force. But, you know, <laughs> we think we can vote them down. <laughs> Anyways, it would be and also vote for the Laurel Hill Association. Uh, okay. Excellent. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, for lobbying, then I've got a few priorities. <laughs> <laughs> Had to throw that in. All right, anyways. All right, yes. What do we need Hugh for? Because Hugh's kind of. Yes. Busy. Well, the next thing is uh, signs and hours. Mm -hmm. And um, I never received an email related to your correspondence with Mass Corps. Have you had one? <laughs> yes. Um, I think we're waiting for definitive design. Is that what we're waiting for? I didn't think so. Um, From the commission? Cemetery board. Is that what we were waiting for the email for that to forward to him? Uh, no, but I will resend it to you yeah. um, and and get a confirmation from him that it would be good in terms of font size. What is it we're talking about? Right. The, the cemetery hours open dawn to dawn. So you mean the sign? The sign, yes. Okay, yeah. 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 Okay, mm -hmm. I will put that back on my action item list to, to get that stuff to you. Yep, and as soon as you get it to me, I'll just do we have a town font? <laughs> I, that was questioned during last meeting, wasn't it? The fonts and yeah. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Uh, I think it was mentioned last meeting. Yeah. Uh, that. It, it, for this one, it doesn't matter, but that's something we should kind of at some point talk about, just making sure signs are consistent. Well, the, and and so my thought process is this is a sign that needs to be read by people who are driving into the cemetery. <laughs> So we want it to be look similar to uh, a road sign. Font is more the shape of the letters, not the size of the letters. Um, so. Yes, I understand that, but uh, it, it needs to be readable when you're in a car. No, uh, no like, a, you know, <laughs> uh, what is it called? Um, you know, uh, No hand scrawling thing? No hand scrawled script. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it should look like a wedding invitation. Did you send that to me before? I did. Okay, but, I missed it. So uh, not in the not since the last meeting. I'll I'll resend it. Oh, okay. That's yep. okay. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. My fault there. No, no, it's not oversight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, spring projects: cleaning and resetting stone workshops. I know you and Mike were going to talk to preservation. Yeah. Did that? Uh, is that I, able to happen? I think Mike's just. Been real bit everybody's been real busy as far as that. Okay. I know that uh, there was some question on um, there was some uh, other people involved in this. Is that in doing that? There's questions risen. You know, what's the better management of time and money? You know. Well, when do you want to? When do you want to? I mean, is this something you can do? Or is it? I don't know because I think it was to find out how in depth it was. I think it was what we were supposed to find out or look into. Well, it was also related to um, the highway department can't spend a whole week with right. these folks doing something. So it, I think you and Mike were going to talk to the preservation folks about, you know, what could a schedule look like? Right. And that, that would be doable with for your department. When is the window before you guys get really busy? Uh, there is no window. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it, uh, it, uh, you know, I mean, if the snowstorms are less than a foot, it's not too bad on you guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, I'm just wondering if, like, uh, April 1st to May 1st, I mean, is it, or is it just yeah, not one? Everything it seems to be weather yeah. dictating, you know, I mean, that's the real thing. And then one season is 
this is this is the previous one, one regard to another. So I think that was the whole thing was to see how. Do you have at least one person who could go through something like a couple of days over two weeks or a week straight? Yeah, I think Mike and I talked, we're going to talk about that. Right. You know, I think that was kind of how it was left during the last meeting. And I think it was just, you know, I think it was just a matter of. Uh, I mean, it's not realistic, too. We can just have them train volunteers and pay them to come out and do them every now and then. But I guess that was the, the, the thinking is that this wasn't a job for volunteers. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know yeah, why it could that. have been, you know, yeah. just handling stones. It could be difficult. And so you should have skilled people who are more skilled in, in doing it. Okay. Well, let's make sure. Uh, okay, so if you could just, you know, uh, 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 let's talk ourselves and make sure. And I'll talk to Michael and make sure we kind of figure it out. Yep. Um, it was pretty clear in the last... Yeah, no, I know. I didn't remember. Okay. It's just I think, uh, yeah, the fire, the fire thing came. We had a lot of big projects in the last few weeks. But, okay. You know, yeah, it's just a matter of kind of. There's only so many hours in the day, <laughs> and these guys, you know, had other things going on. <laughs> yes, I do know that. We I heard they had, a, they had a couple of big parties, and you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Um, the other thing on the agenda was time issues related to th. Y M E, which were plants, and I don't know what the issues are. It was something Karen was going to bring to the meeting, so I was involved with some of that, and it was um, whether or not I, I investigated with wards. Yes, and they were having trouble finding um, plants that were the same species of thyme okay. as the um, cemetery. and so they had suggested taking plugs of the existing and transplanting those uh -huh. and so that was the um and they thought that that was a, a, a good suggestion do you want to broaden the search for actual plants or go with the plug idea i think the plug idea is pretty good because then it would be like soils that it was dealing with so if we've got time at the cemetery that's hardy or yep. you know pluggable yeah <laughs> um that that would have an advantage and so did they recommend a certain size of plug? No, they didn't. Okay. They didn't get into that. Okay. But I can ask them that. Yeah, because we obviously don't want to create holes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah. Yeah. they have to fill them in. There's a few real good landscapers around too that are in the, our neighborhood. Maybe yeah. reach out to one of them. Uh huh. I mean to actually do the work? Or, or you know, get their input maybe too, you know? Yeah. Got some very very good landscapers. Who were some names? Tom, Mark. Well, yeah, yeah. Tom, Mark, and Toby. I mean, there's who? Toby. Toby. What are the last names? Uh, Tom Farley, Mark Faber, Toby. What's Toby's last name? Uh, I, say, I don't want to say it wrong. Nisimo. Toby. Uh, Toby Nisimo. Ingersoll is good. Ingersoll. Yep. Oh yeah, that's right. Most of uh, real good uh, landscapers right here. All right. Maybe maybe reach out to them. They might have a good idea or something. Tom will be back in town in a week, so. Uh, and he's gonna walk. Uh, he's gonna walk the the fountain park with me. So uh, I'll try to bring it up with him. But we also can, you know, uh, just have conversations with all of them. I don't know. Do they have? Do they have resources that would be any more widespread than wards um, for, for getting the same kind of of soil? I mean, time. I can't, I don't want to speak for anybody who isn't here, but I know Tom, my, you know, I've worked for Tom for a lot of years and, you know, he has a lot of different places that he gets material, you know, so I don't think he's restricted to one. Yeah. Now, I know he uses wards too, so, I mean, I know that they're good too, but, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I, I imagine if he, a couple, a couple other people might have a couple other ideas. Yeah. So, I, I think it's worth just reaching out if we're going to invest, or if you're going to invest in the project. So. Yeah. And and if we could find plants, that might be a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Right. Doing the plugs, so you know maybe uh, maybe we try to have this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So who would like to have the conversation? One of you three. <laughs> <laughs> I have zero. Okay, so so he was not volunteering to. to Do you want me to? I mean, I. We would need some names of 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 people to contact at least. Yeah. Um. 
I have, I have Mark and Tom's number. Uh, who the other, uh, I don't have Mark, Pokey or, or uh, who? No, Mark Faber. Oh, Fry Faber. Oh, I've, yeah, yeah. I got Mark's. He's a. And what's, what's Ingersoll's first name? Tom. Tom, Tom that's right. Uh, I think I have his number too, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. So either. it's going to be Ingersoll, Faber, and Farley? Yeah. To start with? It needs him up. Yeah, I don't know how vested he is in that stuff. It might be worth reaching out to Toby, yeah. you know? All right. Who was the other person? Toby Nisimo. Yeah. Oh. He works a lot. You'll see him around working a lot. Yeah. So. Right. And also, uh, just when do you when did when did when does time get planted? I would think like May would be good. Yeah. 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 But it could. Yeah. And once again, it's weather dependent. If we have it. literally at the end of the meeting, if you want, we can call Tom together. Uh, uh, I, I, I talk to him all the time. I would guess that we would want to use the same, not mixed times. Uh, we may end up mixing times anyways if we're letting um, residents put some time in at oh, their, at their okay. lots. What we don't want is the kitchen time, right? The kind that's going to go up into a little yeah. shrub. Yeah. <laughs> we want the... <laughs> the creeping stuff. Yes, yes. the low growing. Yeah. But it, yeah, I know, it is harder to find. So who's going to be reaching out to these people? Well, we can call Tom after. Okay. Because I will, you know, just get off the plate. And then if, if Tom has ideas, great. If not, we can go down the list. And, list, okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Because Tom's on a boat in Key West right now, so he's easier to reach. <laughs> <laughs> if he's close to a cell tower. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get him before he gets busy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> Presumably vacation, not work. No, but he's going to sit down for months. Yeah, the deal is at the point where he's bored and wants to come back. Oh, okay. Okay. Everybody's away. Yeah. All right. Um, so, yeah, I can sit with you for a few moments and make some calls. Yep. Uh, okay. Can we talk bylaw revisions? Sure. Do we want to do that or just wait for Karen? I think um, we're going to get on the on the warrant, and we could actually have a meeting in a few weeks if we need to. It's uh, well, she's proposing that our next meeting meeting be April eleventh, mm -hmm. and the town meeting is sh shortly after that, isn't it? Is it when? Yeah, but the May. town meeting is a month yeah. after, and we have we have time still. Ooh, I would say I definitely think we ought to talk about it. All right, and because yeah. then we will yeah, have I a consensus here, and be able to take that to Karen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I, mean, I thought we were close. I didn't see any. Do you guys see any issues or? Well, uh, yeah, let's yes. Right. yes. All right. Do we need uh, Do we need Hugh for this? Um, unless you would like to share your thoughts on bylaws. Well, I think I think I'm okay. Um, do you? I think the the first thing we need to ask is, do we include non residents in the in the bylaws? Uh huh. Because I think that's the main issue that we have right now is, do we include um, non resident homeowner house owners i'm going to call them house owners because it's not their home <laughs> it's not their primary residence um pros and cons of do we include well, them the pro is that it's more inclusive and the con is that it uses up space more <laughs> right. so potentially so i i've got no problem with including them but you guys know the layout better than me in terms of whether it'll fill up the cemetery faster, essentially. But. I I guess I I have issues because that includes people like my next door house owner who doesn't live in Stockbridge and has a couple of houses here and they're just for investment. And I don't they are not part of the community. They but can't they're not eligible for being on town boards. Um, and so I don't, I don't think that they should be eligible to be buried. That's my personal opinion. And yet they selected Stockbridge. There's some connection to Stockbridge or is it like, wow, this house is just available. And so I'm, I'm going to get it. It's a, it's a good deal. Right. I, I feel like I, I'm more you know, like, if you want if they're paying taxes, they should they should be allowed to to be here. And whether it's a taxpayer who has a, a domicile here, or whether it's the sweet shop owner who can't live in town but's been working in town for decades, even that person should be able 
that business owner should be able to be buried here if they have the desire to be here. And I guess one of the reasons why... But they aren't here. They're... they're but some are. Renters are. I, but, but, the, but, but there's some connection to Stockbridge for them. Yeah, because we deal with this. Really attractive. How we do I'm, I'm, I'm doing all yep, of the, you know. Yep, I understand. And the uh, cons. And know. look, at there's, there's, there's a whole, we're dealing with this with some of the other bylaws right now. You know, uh, there's a whole um, spectrum of folks associated with the community. At one extreme, you've got an investor owner, which literally has no ties to the community. But in between that, you've got a lot of people who, like the moles uh, on, on Mackinac Shores, they've been coming here for 70 years. Uh, their parents owned that house. There's a lot of people who, who inherited houses here, and while it's not their primary residence, they spend three, four, five months and more as they get older um, here. And I think that um, I think that to exclude them because we've got a problem with them, I think that hopefully we'll continue to minimize the number of investor owners of property because it's terrible for the town. Uh, but for that other great expanse of folks, I, I I really think if it's I agree with I agree with Candace. Well if they if they have a primary residence someplace else, wouldn't they be wanting to be buried where their primary residence is? Maybe, but probably not let them choose. Yeah. Right? But why do we exclude them? That's I guess for me that's the question. All right. And, and I know towns are responsible for having burial space for their residents. That's I think it's something like that written in the, the chapter one as <coughs> general law and so you know we do need to continue to be worried about space and richie atward has expressed that you know we, we don't need to worry just yet and so before that just yet gets here well we may have to find other burial locations for people and they, those may or may not be in stockbridge you know we may end up being some other location to say okay stockbridge has run out of space for um, a cemetery, and so we're going to use it in an, an adjacent town. And then we'll be stacking people like they do in yeah. the, uh, Denmark. <laughs> yeah, or e even down in Louis uh, Louisiana. Um, so I, I, and also the fact that more and more people are being cremated, which takes up less space in the ground if they're going in the ground. The biggest aspect is really the monument. I think if our bylaws start to possibly if people want cremation spaces, we should start selling cremation size areas rather than full body burial graves. And that will also help us reduce the amount of space we're taking up with burials. Yep. Um, do we, uh, we don't address the cremation spaces in the new bylaws or? No. Well, but could we do it in the regulations? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so, so, and uh, so I just wanted to point out that Currently, the bylaw states residents or taxpayers, including longtime residents or taxpayers who have needed to move, and then it goes on to talk about assisted living or care facilities and family members. So, what we proposed is to change the word taxpayer to homeowner. That's what we were proposing with this bylaw, like one aspect of it. And I, I'm not sure that's the right way to go. Now, I'm more inclined to keep it residents and taxpayers. And what several cemeteries in the, the Massachusetts are doing is they're charging a higher fee for non-residents. You can be buried here if you're a non-resident, but you're going to pay us 500 extra dollars to be put into the ground. Um, that could be a deferral. I mean, a, a uh, so what's the word I'm looking for? Turn off. <laughs> to turn off, right? <laughs> to, to some people, and some people are like, that's all right. I, I'll pay the extra five hundred dollars because I really want to be buried in Stockbridge. Um, so we, we have the mm -hmm. the chance to look at this from a fee standpoint. That would be more palatable uh -huh. to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and I know. Well, what what else were you thinking, Pat? Based on also some of Karen's notes that she. It sent to the group last week. Well, I, my comments and stuff were, were in those notes at the end. The whole thing that I had sent her. Um, so if we include... Uh, 
So if we go down to the last page. I had said legal residents of Stockbridge and non-resident homeowners or non-resident house owners shall be entitled to be interred. So if you include the, however we define the, the people that own homes, own houses here, but it's not their primary residence. Um, then it gets into how do you describe those that are entitled, what are the restrictions? You know, the 10 years immediately prior to moving their legal residence out of Stockbridge for their own care at a facility or private home or to care for another person. And this also includes non-resident homeowners who had legal title to their house or home for at least 10 years immediately prior to death. Mm. What, so what are you thinking about that? Um, well, that's what the wording that I have, have here. So that how do we describe the people that are taxpayers? So is it... So someone that has property here, but doesn't have a house on it, mm -hmm. are they also entitled? So it's anybody, you're saying, you said taxpayers. If, it's a, if, if, if we took the word homeowners or house owners out of this bylaw, I would replace it, put back in taxpayer. And taxpayer. I, and I would say, yes, that person would be allowed to be buried at the Stockbridge Cemetery. Right. And, and I would also, I... I I don't like this idea of 10 years of putting a time limit. Somebody has to move out of town to either be cared for or care for somebody else. Mm -hmm. If they still have this connection to a town, I think they should still be buried here or be an, entitled to have a burial spot here, a right to yeah, burial. Yeah. The time period doesn't yeah, make it, that it, much it, difference to me. Either. No. And plus, you know, what happens if they... You know, it was nine and a half years. They didn't spend 10 years here. Yeah. Do, do we say, Aunt, sorry? No, I don't think so. Um, so I, I, I really am uncomfortable with the time period. And we do have uh, more than you might realize a number of postage stamp, like weird little uh sort of uh properties properties that yeah that are that uh, have no value and they they're effectively you know abandoned because you know it's some when they carved up the map you know this little 80 square foot thing ended up being owned by somebody and it you know so i'm not i'm not saying that matters because it's relatively not inconsequential but you know um yeah so you're saying it is consequential? No, I'm. I'm not. I'm. I'm just talking out loud and listening to the conversation. Uh, I don't. I don't think we need to worry about it. But I can't imagine. There are that, some of those. Though. I can't imagine that there would be enough of those types of situations that somebody would want to, who owns them, would want to be buried here. Right. I'm thinking. Right. You know, it's just like by just normal circumstance, yeah. they're not going to be. Right. That's not going to be an issue. I would think. Mm -hmm. Good. So uh, the people that is like what Patrick's talking about that come here for years and years and years, I would think that there would be a house here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's not. I see what you're saying. So so why not so include by another house by, owner? By just happenstance. Yeah. It would sort of. The people that have property here and don't have a house here would not have a strong incentive for wanting to be buried here, I wouldn't think. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. so I don't have a real strong feeling one way or the other whether we say taxpayer or would that eliminate the businesses that. 
business owners? Well, taxpayer would expand it. Taxpayer would, would enable them to be buried right. here if they wanted to be. Because they pay business tax? Is that how it works? Well, you guess, but I mean, most businesses are corporations. I mean, the taxpayer question as it relates to businesses is pretty complicated. You've got a wide variety of structures. So if you're a part owner in a C corp or an S corp or a partnership, you know, uh, uh, I'm not sure how this bylaw would be interpreted. You know, you're kind of part of an entity that pays a tax, but a corporation, of course, can't get buried. You know, uh, unless it's a Silicon Valley bank. We'd like to bury some. Um, <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, I, I think that um, I think that that I think that the intent is if somebody runs a small business here and it's like a mom and pop kind of thing that, you know, that, that if they want to be buried here. They can't. I, uh, it it it's um, uh, it's worth asking probably Donna uh, how we take that intent and put it into the language. Because uh, I think it's a good intent, but you know, uh, I mean, do we have any big? I mean, you know, uh, you've got now the uh, probably the biggest. I'm thinking about big companies in town. Uh, Red Lion, you know, that's local ownership, right? But not all living in Stockbridge. Um, and uh, you've got I don't know where does Donovan live. It's a big business, isn't it? Gravel Empire, what? Yeah, okay. So that's a good question. You know, somebody like that is, I think, what we're talking about. You know, uh, 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 you know, all the small mom and pops on Main Street, you know. And people like Zabian that own part of, all right. part of mm -hmm. commercial center, or what do they call that? Stockbridge? Industrial Park. Industrial Park. <laughs> what a misnomer that is. <laughs> Um, so that would entitle Davies of Lee. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I guess my other question is, you know, just so many now people put their houses in trusts for their kids, and you know, and uh, as they get older, they may not be coming here. You know, I, I, I don't. I think it's. Uh, but if they're if they're if they put it in trust, like Maria Carr. Maria Carr has her house in trust for, with her son. Mm -hmm. um, so she's not entitled to do the senior work off anymore because she doesn't pay taxes herself. But she's still a resident in that home, so she still qualifies because she's a resident. So right. changing the title doesn't make any difference. No, I guess. It, ent it entitles, it would then entitle the the whoever it was that took over title. I mean, I, look, I don't think we're going to nitpick. <laughs> you know, it's sort of like if you, you know, I think it, personally, if it passes the smell test, I think we should let people get buried here. But. You know. <laughs> I don't Not literally. Think, I don't think putting it in trust for somebody with somebody else, because most of those people are still going to stay in the home. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one of the, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was that was spelled out in the, the existing bylaw. Residents or taxpayers, including longtime residents or taxpayers who have needed to move to assisted living or nursing facilities or have transferred their property interest to a parent, sibling, child, grandchild, or other immediate family member, or to a family trust or other legal entity befitting benefiting an immediate flaming member shall be entitled upon death to be interred in a burial plot in the town's cemetery. Have we taken that out? I think I think that discriminate, discriminates against people like me who don't have any offspring and, and have no immediate family. family. Yeah, you're right, it does. So, and I don't think that's fair. I agree. So I don't think anything about the trust should be included. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Mm -hmm. So what if this said residents or taxpayers, including uh, residents or taxpayers, taxpayer, including longtime residents or taxpayers who have needed to move to be cared for or to care for others shall be entitled upon death to be interred in a burial plot in the town cemetery. Can we do a Cedric Pie style thing for members of the cemetery commission? <laughs> 
kind of special little corner that we could do a little bit of extra, you know. What, what does that mean? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Why do you want to do that? <laughs> so we, we definitely get a pot. Oh, I see. <laughs> we can put Karen in the middle. All right, we'll put Karen in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're getting giddy. Yes, yes, we could do that. <laughs> now, I, I think the, the, the whole bit about yeah transferring yep ownership it, and stuff yep I, yeah it, I think it gets that's, murky it's murky and it's discriminatory against single people that don't yep. have mm. yeah know, don't have offspring <laughs> and whose yep. parents and grandparents are long gone right. <laughs> yep so yep i hear you pat oh, what time do we have 1036. Um, and I agree that, that the time period doesn't have any issue. I'd like to bring up, should we include financial reasons? Because there are a lot of, it would be nice if there's some way we could word in anybody who <laughs> is reluctant to leave Stockbridge, but is forced to for unknown reasons, you know, personal reasons or whatever, be it care or financial reasons. Oh, so don't so just I, restrict it to care reasons. Yeah. Because, you know, there, I'm yeah, sure there, I'm sure there are people who have wanted to live here all their life, but toward the end can't afford to live here anymore, mm. which is really rather sad. It's horrible, yeah. So how do we word that so that we could include those kinds of situations? Because we've only really included health and welfare or health reasons. We haven't really included financial reasons unless we word it somehow to- Financial health. <laughs> yeah. To, you know, either for the well-being of themselves or others. Because yeah. well-being could be financial well-being or health well-being. Mm -hmm. Who don't want to leave Stockbridge but feel that they have compelled that they have to for mm -hmm. well-being reasons. Mm -hmm. To put food on the table. That would be, I would like to push for that. There are, probably aren't tons of those, but I bet it has happened. Mm -hmm. All right. And that might be why somebody transfers ownership too, is because maybe their son or daughter can pay the taxes and they're having trouble doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. And they know that it's gonna to go to their son or daughter eventually anyway, or whomever, it doesn't make any difference who. Uh -huh. So that would be my, my suggestion. And whatever word we can use to, or words, group of words to say, is it taxpayers? Is it truly taxpayers that anybody that pays taxes in town is entitled? Because that's what it seems to be coming down to. Well, that's what it is right now. Okay. And, and Patrick recommended that we reach out to Donna Brewer about businesses as taxpayers. Yeah. How does that relate to a uh, If we need to. I mean, I think, uh, I think that if we, I, I don't know. I, I, I had said what, residents or homeowners? That's what we originally had put in, so that's what we sent to her. Yes, and that's what she came back with. It's on that next to last page. <clears throat>
right? So it just says residents or homeowners shall be entitled to be interred in a burial plot in the town cemetery, subject to the requirements of this article. Uh, See, that, that doesn't include your thought about taxpayers. Correct. And uh, I think Donna originally came back with the thing about the 10 years and the family members and um, so restricting it in that yeah. way. And I think, I know my personal inclination is to open it up more. Yes. I, I don't think there should be any restriction on family members or whatever. And I don't think that mm -hmm. transferring ownership should make any difference either. Uh-huh. Yes. Do we allow, if somebody has, you know, uh, somebody's parents are buried here and they don't live here now, do we allow them to be part of a family thing? We don't really have family plots, do we? There are still some family plots that are open and we recently did have a request from a woman from, I think she was living yeah. in Arizona yeah. and she was able to be interred mm -hmm. or somebody was able to. We have some flexibility there. Yeah. All right, good. But, but, the but most, most, I don't know if people are buying family plots now. I don't think that's happening I now. No, I don't. I we don't, we don't so allow either. that, I don't think. Mm -hmm. It's just, you get the next spot. And available. the assumption is that if, if they say they grew up here um, and would like to be buried here, assuming that they will inherit their parents' house at least at some point, that mm -hmm. that would entitle them. Yeah. Except if the parents have already sold the house. Right, right. <laughs> right. right. Mm -hmm. Or the, the state has sold the house, whatever. Okay. Yep. So. I can write up a, another couple versions of, of okay. this and- And if someone stays here in an Airbnb, can they get buried here? Well, so- <laughs> If they're renters. <laughs> That's right. I, the, the, is there a minimum, is that have to be a long-term lease? Yeah. How long does, yeah. <laughs> but at the point that they die, if they rent here. <laughs> So the, the, the cemetery law. In the they take an Uber with surge pricing. You know. the cemetery law in the kind of a rental, isn't it? Evolved from law in the in the UK, and and so in the 1600s, if I'm in a pub and I died, the pub owner was the person responsible for burying me, oh. not the family. So it's been fairly recent history that family members get to have the dead body back and bury their loved ones. And so there was enough people dying in England in pubs that they had a law. <laughs> I bet there was. <laughs> what if you died in church? Yeah, I guess you went into the churchyard. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah I, I bet there's... what they were serving in the chili. <laughs> I bet the number of deaths that occur in, in, in places of alcoholic consumption <laughs> is, is fairly high. It might be. It's timeless. Here. Timeless. <laughs> I meant the THY and me, you know. <laughs> All right. Um, do we want to go on to any of the other? I don't know that we have. 1.2 seems to be the, yeah, that the one with the, the most yeah, that issues. Was, uh, so I'll put together another 1.2 based on our discussions and okay. uh, reach out to Karen and to Donna Brewer, I guess, and we'll take it from there for our next meeting, which. Um, Hopefully, can yeah, we're usually we're, what the we, uh, third or fourth? She's proposing April 11th because uh, she's supposed to be away. Uh, so, okay. April 11th would be uh, what's that? Tuesday at 10. Yes, Tuesday at 10, April 11th. We're just about done, Ron. If you need me. Oh, we're good. All right. <laughs> Graduate the cemetery commission is a great group. <laughs> you know, Ron Berger, he's head of the con conference. Yes. Yeah. Oh, hi. This is uh, Candace, you know Pat. Can you get the picture spot? <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about the VIP section for cemetery commission members. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. If anyone's listening, I'm joking. That was, that was a joke. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, um, next meeting we're proposing for April 11th, which is different from our previously scheduled meeting. Thursday still on a 10 a.m. 11 10 a.m. And is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. I'm in favor. Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs>